The world's 10 warmest years on record all occurred in the last decade, and Earth's oceans absorb 90% of the world's heat. All that heat is part of the reason scientists from Colorado State University are forecasting an extremely active hurricane season. They're expecting 23 named storms, 11 of them hurricanes. For context, there was an average of seven hurricanes per year in the past three decades. One of the co-authors of that forecast joins us now, Alex D. Rosier. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm not sure I'm looking forward to hearing about this, but before we get to how many more hurricanes we're going to see, tell us about the relationship between heat and hurricanes and what that means. Yeah, so uh, one, of, one of the really big drivers for this season's forecast is um, that we're having record warmth in the Atlantic Ocean. So not just a warm Atlantic Ocean, but a record warm Atlantic Ocean. We're also seeing evidence in the atmosphere that that, that ocean temperature is going to continue to warm as we head towards the peak of hurricane season in August and September when we see our most intense period of activity. Uh, now, hurricanes draw their energy from the warm oceans, and this year there's going to be quite a bit of fuel for those storms to tap into. Um, another aspect of that that we often talk about is, is climate change. And in, in general, our reliable historical records of hurricane activity is short compared to climate timescales. Uh, which makes connecting hurricanes and climate a difficult task. However, data we've collected over recent decades reveal some concerning trends. Um, we are seeing a greater proportion of storms that are reaching intensities uh, that are extreme, and we're also seeing more rapid intensification, which is when storms get strong very quickly. Uh, a warming planet also makes hurricanes more dangerous. Sea level rise brings oceans closer to communities that are susceptible to storm surge, and a warmer atmosphere can carry more water to support flooding rainfall from these storms. Um, so all in all, you're right, uh, it's not good to be talking about this heat. Alex, your forecast also predicts La Nina conditions this season. What exactly does that mean and how does that differ from El Nino? Yeah, so the El Nino Southern Oscillation, or ENSO, uh, as we call it in abbreviated form, impacts weather globally. But it also has a strong relationship with hurricane activity, which makes it a good predictor. So the key factor is ENSO's effect on wind shear, uh, which is a term for the way that the winds change in direction and magnitude with height in the atmosphere. Now, this change in atmospheric winds, when it's strong, can tear hurricanes apart as they try and form. During El Nino years, winds in the upper atmosphere are stronger, and you typically get more wind shear that can try and keep that hurricane activity mm. in check. However, during La Nina years like this year, there's lighter winds aloft, and that makes for a very supportive atmosphere for hurricanes. Last year, we had a very warm Atlantic like this year, but the presence of El Nino kept the season at least somewhat in check. This year, the Atlantic is still very warm, but we're transitioning towards a La Nina, which means that there really is a lot of potential for an extremely active hurricane season this year. I imagine if you live in a hurricane-prone area, you're wondering where are we expecting the most storm activity? Were you able to pinpoint that? As far as saying exactly where each storm will go, um, I'm sure no one's surprised by the fact that it's, it's impossible to know where a storm will go exactly before it forms. But if you look to the historical record, as we do as we write this report, you can start to understand what places are more prone to impacts, uh, like the northern Gulf Coast, for example, that's been a hot spot in recent years. Mm -hmm. In a year like this, when there's more hurricane activity expected, those odds grow up, uh, they, they go up quite dramatically. Um, and we also prefer our strongest hurricanes to stay in the remote regions of the Atlantic, far away from land, and many do. However, in La Nina years, that tends to favor more long track hurricanes that can make the trek all the way across the Atlantic and start to impact land masses. Speaking of Florida, Alex, what could this mean for communities still recovering from previous hurricanes, like parts of Florida after Hurricane Ian? Yeah, that's a great question. And not even Ian, but Adalia this past year that hit Florida as well, um, which is where I grew up. So I always hate to see those pieces of news. But when major hurricanes hit, they hit hard. Um, many are still dealing with the mess that Adalia and Ian left behind. Getting entire communities back on their feet is not a small task. Uh, the forecast for an active hurricane season is awful and heavy news for those affected that are still trying to, to get back to normal. This year, everyone should be on alert, but there's no reason to panic for an active hurricane season forecast. Uh, we really like to, to harp that react by getting prepared. Regardless of what the season holds, it only takes one storm to make it an active season for you. Carry the peace of mind of knowing your evacuation routes, what your plan is before a storm even threatens your area. And if one does, 
Stay calm and pay attention to the forecast of the National Hurricane Center and the guidance of your local emergency managers who are briefed on and trained for things just like this. All right. Very good advice. React by getting prepared. Alex DeRosier, thank you so much. Thank you.